beautifully. What? No. Now you can hear you. What the what? Great, that's fine. Okay, uh, in the order in here, let's uh, let's do introductions for ourselves. So, Sarah, would you begin to start? I can definitely start. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Sarah Bacardi. I'm on the TrustWorks team. Uh, in my day job, job, I'm a software engineer, and one of the ways that I dedicate my time to trust internal projects is by being part of our facilitation guild. Um, and that's how I end up occasionally running all hands meetings. Mike. Hey everyone, uh, can you hear me okay? Great, uh, my name is Mike Wagner. Um, I am working for a large enterprise media company um, and leading and on an embedded uh, media agency team. So we service mostly internal customers, but it's an agency model just like you would be in the wild. Um, and lead a weekly combined status meeting for about 30 folks. Um, so it's local to my team and it, I think the primary function is probably social, but uh, we need the pretense to have it for probably other purposes. So that's that's the balance I'm, I'm looking to discuss a little bit more today. Thanks. Uh, I'm McRae. I'm also at Trust. Um, I just came off a month of running our uh, weekly all hands meeting um, every, uh, once a week. Sorry, once a week. Um, and yeah, I'm definitely sort of interested in like what, where we find the real benefits here, um, and, and pleased to hear how it goes at other places. Uh, I'm an engineer, but also part of the facilitation guild. We've been enjoying stretching these muscles. Emily, how about you? Hi, uh, my name is Emily Nakashima. Um, I am the director of engineering at a small developer tool startup called Honeycomb. Um, we are a, a remote friendly team, but we are trying to be more remote first. So um, we sometimes do all hands meetings and I kind of know that we're in this painful, I, I will sometimes help facilitate them. They're once every two weeks. We know we're kind of in this painful place where they're better for employees who attend in person than folks who um, join remotely. So I'm just hoping to um, talk about best practices and pick up whatever tips I can. Uh, my name is Isaac. I'm a software engineer here at Trust. I'm also part of our facilitation guild. So I, I also occasionally facilitate um, all hands meetings or other um, large meetings. Uh, that's sort of a new thing that I jumped into when I, when I joined Trust. So I'm looking to um, determine more specifically what the skills are associated with that task um, and figure out how to do a better job of, you know, being aware of all the different pieces, all the different people. Um, yes. Thank you. Pam. Um, okay. Hey, I am a software engineer at One Medical, and our all hands meetings had its facilitator leave the company. So there's like a need for someone to step in. And while I don't want to be that person, I am wanting to learn more around how to make an all heads meeting inclusive to everyone and kind of get people excited to take the role on a rotating fashion rather than having a designated always be the facilitator. Um, so yeah, just here to get some more ideas. Thank you. Aaron. Cool. Hey everyone, um, I'm Aaron Pava. I am one of the co-founders of Civic Actions. Uh, we provide uh, digital services for government, fully remote team, about 75 people. Um, we have a weekly all hands call and a monthly all hands call. And I um, facilitate both of those or kind of um, making sure that we have team participation in all those. Um, I love this conversation. I'm something actually I'm really excited about and put a lot of attention on. So 
saw this invitation, I was like, wow, I don't know where this came from, but this is right in my alley. So glad to be here. Glad to have you, Liz. Hey y'all, I'm Liz calling from Brooklyn and uh, I design collaboration systems for open science and technology. Right now having a bit of an adventure installing um, decentralized systems for Extinction Rebellion, as well as setting up their conflict resilience. Um, I'm just here to learn, thanks. Thank you. Um, and my name is Willow, I'm also with Trust. You can tell because McCray and I have the same ceiling behind us. Um, but you'll see that we're on a distributed team because Sarah and Isaac don't. Um, and so, <laughs> hey, uh, and I really love facilitation. It's something that um, I did before I joined Trust and that I used to make my living at, and now I think that it is a, a core component to teams running well. So that's, that's what I'm here for. Okay, what I would love next is if in the same Order. So starting with Sarah, and then you can self-prompt on your way down. Um, talk about any pain points that you might be facing or that your team is facing. Um, if you hit two minutes, which is a surprisingly long time, I will uh, message you in the Slack a thing first directly to be like, hey, and then I might actually mute you if you keep going on for too long, because that's how uh, groups run is when someone is willing to be an asshole. Um, that's not true. So, hey, Sarah, uh, <laughs> what are some what are some pain points or sticking points that you notice with all hands meetings? Sure. Um, the first from kind of a, a people focused perspective is as our team gets larger and larger and we don't have as much familiarity with each other. Um, it seems like people are less uh, have less courage to speak up in front of a group of 70 people, especially on Zoom. That means that you just become the big face on the screen um, who's talking. Um, so finding a way to encourage people to ask questions in a larger forum, I think would be great. Um, or providing other avenues to for that. Um, from a real like technological facilitation perspective, uh, running all of the Zoom components gets difficult sometimes, especially when you end up, uh, Trust Now has more than 50 people, so our faces spread across multiple faces in Zoom. Um, keeping an eye on chat and doing all of those other pieces gets more difficult, especially when you're screen sharing. Mike, you want to jump in? Sure. Um, that was great. Uh, let's see. So pain points, um, encouraging high signal um, and avoiding multitasking by attendees. Um, uh, you know, if, if folks, if we're going to get a group together, it would be, it makes sense for folks to be paying attention or just not get together. Um, context of the, so like I said in the intro, kind of feel like we're stuck between, oh, no, another meeting which everyone loves to say, and you can bond over that. Oh, there's another meeting. But at the same time, this is one chance a week where it's dedicated for the whole team to get together and hang out. And, and so I think that's really the, the main benefit, but um, it's almost like the, the benefit is getting together to complain about this one meeting where we all get to hang out. <laughs> so I don't know, there's a, there's a beautiful balance there somewhere. Um, and then we're transitioning from primarily onsite uh, and a meeting that was was it set up years ago, frankly, um, that, that, that's really structured around being all on site with a screen share. In fact, we were using an, like an old school projector, almost overhead projector when I first started. And now we're, you know, up to 25, 30% remote, but we're still focused around a screen share where there's a working document on screen as opposed to uh, something more like this where you can actually see faces and, and there's a, a voluntary or not adopted video participation for those folks at home. We're, we're, we're not there yet. And um, I think that would be an improvement for, for the session that I'm working with. And we don't have a chat, we don't have a chat back channel either that's very active. I think that would be another great addition to uh, help move in the direction of remote. Uh, I'll stop there. Yeah, um, I will say that uh, I agree a lot with 
your first two might like especially with 70 folks like i think our, our meeting is is much more of a sort of like a download on like here's the current status of the world rather than like a conversation as much although it ends with um people being nice to each other which is pretty fun um and so figuring out like what exactly people are interested in like on a weekly basis to, to like have visibility into how the company is working and also uh it, like just sort of to keep people from multitasking all the time or i mean and in this kind of download world i mean like i'm guilty of this too like it's easy to be multitasking and have paying attention is that something you care about or is that like what's the point of this? um and then actually I'll, I'll second sarah like juggling uh we have we have a back channel in Slack. We also have the, the chat in Zoom, which is mostly more like uh, meant to be read by the facilitator. So like, you know, uh, hands and stuff like that are in the chat in Zoom, whereas back chatter is in Slack. And so man monitoring that plus the um, uh, plus the agenda can be a lot when you're trying to like just sort of run through things uh, in front of people. Yeah, I think that's it. Let's see. For us, I think we are in an interesting position in terms of company size. So I think the, the average all hands meeting probably has about 20 people in it, which turns out to be a very awkward size for a video chat. Um, you know, it's just to the point where you can't get everyone's face on screen. Um, but at the point where you feel like you know everyone in the company personally, and you do want to see everyone's face. Um, we typically what we end up doing is putting some people in a conference room, and then some people on a hangout so you can see everyone at once. But there's always some awkwardness between trying to combine um, individual call in with with group um, conference room. So that's just a little technological thing that we feel like we've gone around a couple times on. Um, I would also just say trying to um, figure out how to make these meetings more interactive. So um, we're still a small enough company that, you know, we want to hear people's feedback during the meeting. We want people to feel like it's their meeting that they own. And um, we always notice that folks who are in the room or in the office tend to take advantage of that more than folks um, on the call. So I think those are our biggest challenges right now. One of my concerns has been, well, as trust has grown, um, we've had to adapt our all hands meetings uh, to fit different needs as, as we've grown. And I think that's a, a thing that we've been working on and that's been great, but we're, we're getting to a size where I, I think we're, struggling to determine what things ought to be included in all hands meetings at all. Like there might not be a set of activities or informations that are pertinent to the whole company. Um, some people might uh, have very little context on something that will require a lot of explanation to talk about in an all hands meeting. And some people will be already like, intimately familiar with this topic and it will feel uh, irrelevant or repetitive. So um, yes, I, I think determining what the things are that everybody can hear together and especially what the things are that everyone can hear together that um, makes people feel like they're on a team, like they're, they're part of the group. I think it's especially hard to determine what those things are. That's what I'm thinking about. Um, for us, it's we're physically outgrowing the space that we have the meeting in. So we'll have kind of uh, satellite rooms where people can join in remotely, but there come the people that are in the room where the meeting is uh, being primarily held are the ones that are kind of there. They kind of forget about the remote people, so. Usually the satellite rooms are used by people like most of the time me that want to keep working on whatever it is that they're working on and kind of just hear what's happening in the in the background. Um, so yeah, it seems like just another meeting to a lot of people and I'm wondering what are some ways that we can make it more interactive for the people that are remote. Yeah, for us, um, so the way that our all hands calls work, we have um, 
uh, you know, rotating leadership, essentially. So we encourage everyone to lead at least once one call a year. So the pain point is actually people feeling um, comfortable to lead a call, feel get up to speed on like, oh, my topic's worthy of being included as like, this is going to be my, my, um, uh, the topic for the for the moment and and also getting folks um like uh, scheduled and committed you know so maybe i want to lead a topic on a particular thing and um but i don't want to do it for you know for another couple weeks or months or what have you yeah liz what you got hey i'll just say about my small nonprofit organization staff um, we have two all hands meetings per week. Definitely none of the troubles of the scale a lot of others have spoken of. Um, but we have one for project updates and we have another for discussion. Um, but our new staff um, view these meetings differently than the, the old hands do and we want to design a new style. Thanks. Thank you. Um, the one thing that I haven't heard mentioned yet is, which is sort of embedded in how you get more people to participate is, uh, we had an issue for a while where it was the same people talking over and over again, and we are a large and diverse company, and I think it's important to hear from people. Um, and that's sort of come up, but I wanna make it explicit as well. Um, if I could circle back for a sec, um, one other, Thing is really about attendance. We don't, we're not, um, it's not mandatory that you show up. It's a, it's going to assume that you will, um, and we're encouraged. And, um, but we also know that like client work could come up or other things, you know, um, and so just kind of making it compelling enough and interesting enough and, and kind of a value enough that, that it would be kind of, um, you know, you'd be missing something if you didn't attend. So um, just attendance is threw that on there. Oh, thank you. I'm gonna, um, the reason I was glancing at my other screen <laughs> was not because I was not paying attention, but because I was trying to synthesize all of this into a few topics. Um, so what I've got, I'm gonna delete this uh, purposes of all hands meetings, just because I think we're gonna get into that anyway. And also there's a valuable thing in being a facilitator and just throwing everything out the window, as you all know. Uh, <laughs> no, that didn't work. Uh, so the categories that I heard in here mostly group into the meeting purpose, engagement and participation, who's remote versus who's in person, scheduling, so many faces, and meeting fatigue. Um, if we only got to focus uh, on two of these, which two should it be? Go ahead and throw your two plus marks in under the title of what you wanna be sure we focus on in our time. Give me a thumbs up when you're done. Aaron and Pam, are you set? Thank you, perfect. All right, so for uh, folks that are audio, um, we're gonna do engagement and participation first, then meeting purpose, then who's remote, who's in person, and if we have time for it, we'll get the scheduling. We're not gonna deal with so many faces and we're not gonna deal with meeting fatigue today. So um, what tips and tricks do people have for engagement and participation? What have you seen work well? Not as a panacea, but as a like, I don't know, this worked this one time. One thing that I find essential is to give people a heads up with like three to 10 seconds before participation is expected, especially as groups grow and maybe not all faces are on the screen, kind of tell people 
when you're about to uh, talk to them and then give the topic and then let them respond rather than saying the name last. Uh, and, you know, that way you can kind of go around and round robin, but um, it lowers the stress level, I think, all around. <laughs> give people a heads up. We actually take some time in the beginning of our all hands to give kudos, uh, just kind of like a public forum for recognition. And people are usually like chiming in at the last second and it kind of runs over time sometimes, but it's fun to give people the chance to recognize their peers in front of everyone else. I'll just talk ad nauseum until someone else jumps in. Um, one thing that we've started doing is we use the Zoom chat to take stack. So people will type in hand. Some groups are starting to say either new for a new point or response for a response. It gives people who take time to process to say something, time to process, and then indicate that they want to say something. Um, and then people don't talk over each other. And it takes care of them not being able to see all the faces on the screen at the same time. That's nice. It is predicated on something else I'm going to jump in that we weren't going to do of so many faces, which are like who's in remote, who's in person. If anyone has to be on Zoom, uh, and Isaac, I see your hand. If anyone has to be on Zoom, we all are on Zoom because it gives everyone equal footing. Um, and we found it really helps. Isaac, jump in. I think one thing that trust does to, to get people to show up, I know some, someone was talking about um, like uh, struggling to have people give all hands their full attention, is uh, the expectation that all hands has your full attention comes from the top. It, like it, it, uh, it's something that, you know, our founders, and our, you know, important persons are in every week and they take it seriously and they talk about whatever's on their mind. Um, and I think that helps the rest of us feel like that meeting is meaningful and like that meeting is worth putting our work down for. That's great. Um, one of the things for us, I, I think it helped at uh, one point when we changed the meeting time to you know, uh, uh, early Monday morning specific. I mean, we're a distributed team, so we have people in all time zones, but the, we made the standard meeting time uh, 10 a.m. Pacific. And it just kind of highlighted as like, this is important. We're starting the week. We're all online right now. This is like, we're like, we're setting the tone in a certain, in a certain way. It was like, we are kind of coming, coming out the gate. Like we're one team, we're all checking in here. Um, you know, and, uh, this isn't just like a midweek check-in or an end of the week thing where a lot of people have faded off, but it's like front and center, even at the cost of, we know that Mondays are often really busy for people. There's conflicts with scheduling and all that, but it was like, no, this is kind of to your point. Um, you know that, that, that uh, you know where it comes from the top. It's like, hey, not only does it, you know, we're all here, we're gonna show up, you know, in the morning, you know, we're in the morning for Pacific people. Um, so I've been trying to think of why I find our all hands meetings actually like fun and a joy to attend, and I think that our Slack back channel is one of those reasons. Um, because I like occasionally will dial in from the road, not in front of my screen and it's, it's still good. Like it's good information, but I don't have the fun and camaraderie that I do. Um, and we, we separate it out from the zoom chat so that the facilitator isn't distracted by all of it necessarily. Um, and then I, for example, one of our um colleagues was giving a client update today and his cat would not shut up in the background um and it was just like a flurry of cat emojis and cat gifts and 
people yelling at him to lit his cat in the room. Um, and that's, uh, like, I, I got a great update, but also had this, like, bonding moment with the rest of my colleagues, which I find really enjoyable. Oh, that's great. Yes. <laughs> um, another thing, and I don't know how well this has worked or not worked, but we mix up the format of our all hands where some, like we get two client update weeks in a row because we have enough that we need to divide them across two weeks. And then we do one week that are breakout groups. There's sometimes around a value of like, what do you think this value means or something else? Zoom has a really great breakout room functionality. Um, and so people get to talk with coworkers they might not know very well, although sometimes they always get paired with the same people over and over again. Um, but they also get to actually talk to each other, um, which is nice. Does anyone else want to throw in anything on the topic of engagement or participation, or should we move on to meeting purpose? Does anyone use like a checklist to see like who hasn't participated yet? It seems it seems almost too much and I've avoided doing that. But I if there was a strategy that works well for that, or especially if it was a softer than like, okay, everyone really has to say something interesting ideas. You know, you get to the last 15, 20 minutes and someone who clearly hasn't said anything for the whole meeting, maybe uh, you can direct a conversation their way, for example, um, to, to help encourage full participation. More of a, you know, an audit idea to, to look for full participation. This is not something I've found success with and I'm seeing a lot of <laughs> playing stairs, so maybe it's not uh, a good idea. <laughs> uh, there, there are two different versions of that that I've done. One is when we have smaller meetings, I absolutely keep a sure. And yep. especially if we're doing, we call it popcorn, other people call it beach ball, where you like, whoever just went prompts the next person. And I will keep a list of who has yet to go because not everybody pays attention. And so it'll just be like, here are the people yet to go. So they know who to pick from. Um, so that's yeah. one version. The other version is sometimes I just notice that people are being really quiet and I'll back channel them and be like, I would really like to hear what you have to say on this. Um, mm -hmm. If you're willing, I would like to hear from you, but I don't mm -hmm. like keeping a list of 70 people for an all hands seems onerous. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. That's a good idea. Okay. Let's talk about meeting purpose. I'll, so I'll yeah, okay. have one last thing, um, which is, uh, our meetings, again, because they're sort of status updating, it means that we are trying to hear from sort of different groups in the company, whether that's clients, uh, projects, or uh, internal projects or something like that. And so we sort of come up with, okay, this week we're going to hear from this group of people, and then those teams will often rotate through who on the team is actually going to speak to, like, what their update for the last month is. Um, and so that's been a way that over time we have more participation in the meeting as a whole. Thank you. All right. Meeting purpose. Why do we do these things? They're so like, I ran the numbers one time of how much we pay people per hour and we take an hour a week to do this. And then I was like, wow. Uh, so like, why, why do we do these? Why do you do them? Yeah, Liz. Um, we build our culture together and with so many remote people, um, it's helpful to have a fun check-in topic to just, uh, or like uh, that you named a nice discussion topic of like, what does this value mean to me? Um, we, we normally go with the silly ones, but it helps just move styles across um, large geographic spans. I'm all and then Aaron, I'm, I'm just prompting you ad hoc. Sorry about that. Uh, sure, I have a, a very boring answer, which is that we're, we're just about at the size where all hands tend to be the best way to propagate company context about what we're trying to do and, and, and why. And um, we're at the size where a little bit of interactivity around that and the chance to ask questions can be really helpful. Um, you know, we're a small company. We are trying to build a product. 
the whys behind things change really quickly. And so it seems to be the best forum to share that kind of information. It's also just a social chance to get to know each other. Yeah, so um, I mentioned earlier that we rotate leadership and ask people to speak on topics. And the topics actually can be work-related or non-work-related. Um, and which seems really like to Will's point, like that it gets really expensive. Like we're like, oh my gosh, we're gonna have all these people come on the call and we're gonna teach them how to play game go or something. And that's like, is that valuable? But in a distributed team, you know, it's like you don't have water cooler talk necessarily. You don't have the dinner lunches and kind of the things that people do socially. And you know, for us it's really that um you know, it's what greases the wheels and, and kind of creates the rapport and, and um, connection. And, you know, it really helps to like dive into someone's art or for someone to like, you know, share what they're doing or someone coming up with a proposal and saying like, oh, you know, you know, from the DEI team, you know, we want to, you know, share about the rollout of like the, uh, 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 you know, kind of the incorporation of um, preferred pronouns, for example. And I was like, well, this is what we're going to do. And the DEI team like creates something and like, and knows that they have 30 minutes, knows that they're going to have the full attention of the team. And this is really the opportunity to like kind of roll out an initiative like that. So, um, or if we get back from a conference, it's like, let's do a report back after that conference immediately after, you know, like, okay, the Monday after Code for America, let's report back on all the people that were there. This is what we learned. These are the connections we made. This is like things we might want to incorporate into other aspects of the business. Um, and then, uh, you know, and also just also operationally, if there's things that were saying, Oh, we have a new policy on this, or here's some clarity on something, um, to do account, you know, do your, your, uh, you know, whatever it is, but like, uh, you know, travel uh, receipts, <laughs> you know, just like, this is like, yes, it's in the handbook, but like, let's walk everyone through that so we could all get on the same page. So we kind of use it as the opportunity um, for all those different reasons. And, uh, and it seems to work. One of the reasons um, I think we've kept doing it is that it's disproportionate. We have a fair churn on contractors, unfortunately, and it is disproportionately helpful to folks that are new to the team to see, um, you know, how the team works socially and, and get an idea for what's going on on the team that they're not working on. Um, so I think even just for, even if it only helps the new folks, uh, that's enough of a reason to kind of pull everyone into the room um, to, to help bring onboard folks. Um, and then the other, one other big thing that shows up is, is cross, pot, cross project duplication of effort. You know, if, if there are two project teams that don't happen to talk to each other for whatever reason, and they're like heads down on a project, and then all of a sudden we can surface that two people are working on the same thing, that's, uh, that's a big win. Um. I think at Trust, we still use it mostly for knowledge sharing uh, across client teams, or we have a number of internal projects now that will report out. It's still a great way, in addition to Slack, to just say like, hey, here's this thing going on. Can you please pay attention to it? Um, some of the other aspects that you've mentioned, we have broken out into separate meetings so we have, uh, our all hands is always followed by an open time slot for a one topic talk, um, which Pava, I think is the, the bit that you kind of mentioned um, about like sharing out information. Um, we also do my favorite meeting of the week that Willow started called Being Humans Together, which replaces that kind of water cooler aspect. And I know it's slightly orthogonal to the all hands discussions that we're talking about. Um, but because people are, you know, reiterating, it's hard to build culture in a distributed context. Um, it's a meeting with no purpose other than hanging out and talking to people. Attendance is purely optional, but we typically have a group of about 20 or so of us. Um, who just share about our weeks and then occasionally do breakout rooms and talk about other things. It is routinely the highlight of my week. 
And sometimes people will see really neat things that are sort of like icebreakers, but a little bit more involved and will do one of those for a Being Humans Together. So like McKenna brought one of writing poetry about where you grew up. And it was, it was like, it was so vulnerable and good. Um, and it's, yeah. It's really cool. We, we have a similar, um, not really to all hands calls, but we have, we break the company into five groupings called pods that are exactly that half hour, social, no topic. Maybe there's someone creates an icebreaker, but it's um, just a way to connect. And then every periodically, maybe every six months or every year, we'll shuffle the groupings. So people in the company that don't know each other um, uh, or don't necessarily collaborate with each other on certain projects get a chance to connect with each other socially. Yeah, Liz, I'll, um, I'll send those to you. Did a doc at some point. It's documentation for everything. Um, maybe someday I'll get everyone on a media wiki. My heart lives on. Okay. Um, do we feel complete on meeting purpose? Awesome. Let's talk about who's remote and who's in person. How do you make this choice? Um, or what have you seen work well or not well? Emily, I saw you take yourself off mute. I know you want to say something. Uh, I guess I would say we have something that we know doesn't work well, which is a, a mix of half people who are individually calling in and half people who are in a big conference room together. Um, and I actually am curious to ask the trust folks who work out of the San Francisco office, how you deal with being both on a video call together and in the same room together, which I imagine is often the case um, because we haven't been able to make uh, like either of those work well, you know, with the feedback of the person sitting next to you versus um, having to feel like the people who are individually calling in are like second class meeting citizens. Yeah, I will say that um, I think having everyone be on Zoom all the time is maybe the most powerful tool we've used for making remote meetings work. Um, and say that personally, um, I have mostly gotten used to the hearing the echo of people talking and then talking in my ear. I, mean, I don't know which one I'm really listening to, but I get it at this point. Um, and then, the, but the other way we solve this problem is a lot of people have gotten um, noise canceling headphones to solve the echo problem. Uh, even though, uh, whatever, I've got used to it. And then I actually have gotten like uh, uh, some sort of headset thing so that uh, in cases where there's lots of people talking or like someone on a different team is in a different meeting that um, people can hear my voice. I'm still obviously a little uh, not disciplined about doing that every time, but it helps a lot. But I'll also say that we have once we became more fully remote, uh, fewer people started coming to the office. So our office is often like eight people at the most um, versus you know, people being all over. Um, I actually have a question, which is, is anyone doing um, decision making or polling of any kind in an all hands meeting? Yeah, I mean, uh, we, we all the time, um, I mean, we're a very collaborative group. I mean, we use Trello pretty much for everything and the voting feature on Trello. And so what we'll do is we'll like bang out a lot of ideas and topics and we're whatever brainstorming an idea and then basically do quick card sorting and then um, if you use the V key, you could like quickly vote up cards. If you hover over a card, you can hit V, it does voting. And then we could sort by the most votes and kind of really quickly kind of have like a read. And so we do it for everything, um, including like, we'll do retrospectives on our all hands topic, you know, or, um, uh, you know, I mean, everything, everything, everything. And we use that, that process. Liz, what a good question. I love it. Um, <laughs> it's one of the things that I, uh, 
I was wondering what it is that Gov Zero uses. Was it Polaris or something? Because as the group gets bigger, um, we will be able to answer all the questions that are being asked on a certain topic. And so how do you upvote those and things like that? And Liz, can you speak to how that works at all? Well, there's a deliberative poll or a wiki survey, depending on what the name you'd want to use, um, called Polis. Um, I'm on, it's open source AGPL, but it's, um, I'm on their board, so I can explain that it's down until um, putting the power of machine learning for opinion clustering out uh, can be figured out at, like with proper ethics. Um, <clears throat> Um, but uh, yeah, I'd, I'd love to hear about um, anything from simple methods like how we typed into the Google Doc and we put our pluses there, we put our initials there, or um, you know, up to more sophisticated systems, um, how people use an all hands meeting to help a group see itself. I'll talk more, but only after someone else has. <laughs> um, one interesting thing that we've been experimenting with is we do simple polls sometimes in the chat, like just in the, you know, trust has, or not trust, sorry. Uh, you know, Zoom has this chat sidebar, Google Hangouts has the same thing, and we'll just do simple plus one kinds of polling in there. But for stuff that's a little more complicated than that, um, we are a company that does really well with text and is, you know, pretty async friendly. And so we often find that um, using all hands as a launching point for a document and then, you know, setting that out to live an asynchronous life. So collecting um, questions and answers and that and then bringing that back to the next all hands has actually been really nice because it's sort of, pull, you know, you have this thread that kind of goes from one meeting to the next. Um, and it seems to give people a little more space to participate if they are a little shy about doing it in the moment. We sort of, we, I wouldn't call it an all hands meeting because it's not our usual practitioners meeting, but we do have company wide retros. Um, and we've been trying a tool called Retrium, which is like American democracy. It's both the, the best we've got and also still terrible. Um, it's my feeling on it. Sorry, Sarah. But um, uh, where it's really good at collecting anonymous cards, but then the grouping function only one person can group at a time, which is just too bad of a bottleneck. Um, we've also sometimes used Miro, which used to be real time board, which is like a collaborative whiteboarding thing. Um, but if you don't already know how to use it, it's difficult to learn in the moment, um, especially when you want to be collaborative on something. So I'm probably, I might steal Aaron's Trello voting thing. Okay, I, uh, if anyone has any closing thoughts, now is the time for those on this topic. And then I would love it if anyone would be willing to talk about something that you, you learned today or appreciated about some, some moment during this time. I'm just or, uh, oh, go ahead. Or one small thing that you're going to try out that's different than, like, what about your behavior will change about this hour that we just spent together? I was going to say, I just, I'm appreciating the, even the, um, <laughs> it's kind of meta, but the structure of this call um, with the collaborating on the, on the Google Doc while we're having in the shared note taking. Um, I feel like I was gathering information and then I looked back at the notes and I was like, wow, there's actually some things I missed in my own notes that I got value here. So appreciate that. Um, yeah. Um, I enjoyed lear learning about <clears throat> an, an as yet undefined association called the Facilitators Guild or the Facilitation Guild. Um, I'm going to start one for people I know over here. Maybe we can all hang out.
Um, I really love the idea of using like hand or new response in the chat to be able to jump in with a, a, another um, either thread or response. I, there's so many folks on my team who um, really struggle with jumping in in the moment and having the right thing to say and just being able to give yourself that little pause between um, wanting to get into the conversation and then actually having to talk, I think would really help a lot of people on my team. So thanks for that. Um. Quick sidebar, as one of the people who often finds myself not listening but waiting for my turn to talk, like finding that moment, hand in the chat lets me listen a lot more. Um, and so for, for the people who are a little more extroverted, me, that might be a good way to pitch it to them as well. Uh, I was uh, glad to be reminded that all hands can be a place where like decisions and a lot of like collaboration can happen. I feel like we've drifted away from that a little bit. And, uh, I want to think about how we can bring that back. So. I think the biggest takeaway for me is just looking at a more multimodal approach, which is uh, which is great to be reminded of and just see how other folks are doing. Um, using different modes and side channels. Uh, we're, we're pretty narrow in our approach, and I think that'll be fun to experiment with. Isaac, did you learn anything? I, I did, but I have to go. A bat team thing has just happened. Okay, bye. Bad team is our, our Sarah, do you want to explain what bad team is? Uh, it's the people who are not working on features because they're currently on call. Um, it comes out of uh, officers in the British Army have a Batman. They're the people who take care of other people. We've also repurposed it just to be, you know, like Batman, the DC comic hero. Oh, is it like an all hands on deck, like everyone respond? Uh, we're trying to make it not everyone respond, just the people who are on the call respond. Um, but because people, the engineers on call have their work interrupted enough, we have them on a separate team. So uh, they're not responsible for doing regular feature work. They're more responsible for application maintenance and things for the time that they're on call. Well, I loved hearing about this. Uh, I'm sorry for going again, but um, yeah, my little nonprofit, we have what started off as a bat signal and then we were small enough that eh, I'd get most of us to respond. But because our logo is a pair of um, like uh, field boots, like to go walking through a swamp in, it became a, a boot signal. Pam, do you want to get us back on track? Sure. Uh, I The things that I'm thinking about now are like, how do we more use our back channel? Um, the, we have a back channel for offhand questions during an all hands, but we, not, we don't use it too much. Um, and so thinking about using that, but also being aware of the challenges that come with managing the back channel as well as the meeting agenda. I'm appreciative of all of you coming together to focus on a way that we can all uplift each other. Um, it's really nice to talk to people in different organizations. Um, that was one of the things that uh, I, when I was in nonprofits, it was always like, let's all collaborate and make this better. And sometimes in, in the business sector, it's like, no, don't, like, there's just this automatic, like, don't talk to each other, which doesn't make sense to me. And I don't think makes sense to any of us in the organizations we're in. So I just really appreciate everyone showing up and showing that we can help each other out. Um, and I'm definitely gonna push along with McRae to try to find ways to get more polling and like, let's see if we can make some decisions. Do we need to be making some decisions collectively? We could probably do it. So I'm really excited about all that. Um, I will post 
the video to everyone um, and then uh, either let me know that you're okay with it or not, but tell me a week after I send it if you don't want it posted and otherwise I'll post it to the internet. Um, but I won't do it if anyone says no. Um, does that sound okay to everyone? Thanks for taking the time. It's so nice to meet you all. Nice to meet you all. Thanks all. Bye. Bye. Bye.